In this video, I'm going to review all of the major concepts that we covered in the Dagger 2 course. And uh, I, I'm, I want to try and make this kind of as fun as possible. I'm just going to kind of run through the main things just to kind of uh, remind you of all of the major concepts that we covered. So just to remind you right off the bat of the application that we built, there's a login screen where I can click type in a user ID. I, that user ID is then queried from a REST API. That information about that user is then displayed in this first fragment. This is profile fragment. The other fragment is post fragment, which retrieves a list of random, randomly generated posts, again, from the REST API. Those are the only two screens available. Uh, I can log out and log in with another user and the information would be different. And there's uh, 10 users that are available. That is the entire application. It's very simple. So the first part of this is, I guess we should review the diagram. So we have an application level component called the app component that is meant to stay alive for the entire lifetime of the application. That's what this is all about. It's about uh, components that stretch certain parts of the application and those components contain dependencies or uh, objects that should be used only in those components. So if you want a object to last the entire lifetime of the application, you would put it in the app component. If you wanted a dependency to last only a certain uh, piece of the application's lifetime, you would put it in a sub component. And in this case, we have two sub components. One is auth component and one is main component. Uh, so I wanna stop with the diagram now and let's jump back into the code so, and, and review that. So our first component is the app component. When you're using Dagger, no matter what, you are always going to create an app component. Uh, at least 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm just saying that because I can't think of a situation when you wouldn't, uh, but likely every situation you would. So the first thing you do if you're using the Dagger Android imports, which is the ones that we used in this course, is you would build a class that extends Dagger application. Uh, the class that extends Dagger application will allow you to inject a application into an app component. So it's it, it's required for in the during the process of creating a application level component, which is what I'm going to show you next. So all you do is you extend by Dagger application. You'll be required to insert this application injector um, method, and then you want to return a Dagger app component. And actually, we got to come back to this because you won't be able to right away. First, you got to build the app component. So we'll come back to this. So uh, next, like I said, you need an app component. So inside the DI package for, for dependency injection, I've created a interface class named app component. This is the app component that I was talking about. Inside here, you annotate it with at component and at singleton. I annotated it with at singleton because it's getting the singleton scope. This is just a name. So the app component owns the singleton scope. And if you look at the diagram, uh, you have a couple different scopes, singleton, auth scope, and main scope. The app component owns the singleton scope. There's no difference between these scopes. Like they all do the same thing. The only difference is in how, how Dagger interprets them when you add them to a component. But uh, I'll come back to talking about scoping a little bit more uh, later in this video. So anyway, here we have the app component. Like I said, uh, you want to extend by Android injector and then specify the the class type that this is going to be injecting into, or it's going to be a, a, a service to. So this component is acting as a service, base application is acting as the client. So that's, that's uh, after you build this and extend by this, you can then uh, rebuild. So you'll need to do, you'll need to rebuild it so that Dagger will generate the code for you. And then you can return Dagger app component. So notice that it's just Dagger prepended to the class name app component. This is app component. Uh, and then you would reference builder application and uh, build it. The reason I am able to write application and pass the application context is because I overrided the default builder by writing at component dot builder and creating a new builder interface. I then used the bind instance annotation to bind the application context to the app component. Uh, you don't want to use these all the time, the bind instance annotation. You only want to use the bind instance annotation if you have an object ready when the component is going to be constructed. So that might sound a little confusing to you. All it means is that when I'm building this app component, which is what I'm doing right here, I'm returning the app component, uh, I, I have the application context available because it's in the application class. So I, all, I, all I have to do is pass this. That's why I'm adding it as a bind, binds instance annotation, because I know that the application will be available when I construct this object. 
Another thing you need to remember when you extend by Android Injector and use the Dagger application um, extension is you need to specify a module, a very specific module to the app component. That's the Android Support Injection Module. This contains, I guess, uh, required classes, I guess you would say, uh, to use these Dagger Android imports. So just remember that you always need to add this to the modules of your application level component. No matter what, you'll have to add that. So just add it. Uh, next, let's talk about some of these other modules. The second one here is the Activity Builders module. That's this class right here. This is responsible for actually constructing all of the subcomponents that we have in the project. In this case, we have two subcomponents, the auth activity subcomponent and the main activity subcomponent. Now you might be thinking, I don't see anything that says subcomponent here. And that's because uh, there isn't. When you use the at contributes Android injector, the subcomponents are automatically generated for you by Dagger. So if you look at the generated Java files and go into uh, DI and go into contribute auth activity and contribute main activity, uh, you'll notice that you'll find the subcomponents here. So because I annotated this with add contributes Android injector and added an activity, that will automatically generate a subcomponent for me. So notice here's auth activity subcomponent. And the same thing with main activity. So you have main activity subcomponent. And uh, I, I talked about this in the video earlier in the course too. Like there's no difference if I was to literally copy that so copy exactly what you see there i'm not going to do it but if i was to copy that i could then uh i think which one did i copy main activity so if i copied that one and then commented this out and then pasted that in it would work exactly the same the only thing that i would have to do is i would have to uh, declare the builder inside of the app component um, and some of that might seem very confusing to you i talked about it in the course I can't remember the video. It was the one where I talked about the subcomponents. But anyway, the point of that is is just to tell you that this this just generates the code for you. It generates the code required to create the subcomponent for you. You don't have to use it, but uh, it's another convenience, so why not? It also makes it really easy to pass modules to your subcomponents. So we have auth activity subcomponent, we have main activity subcomponent. All of the, the dependencies or the modules that I only want to use in those subcomponents, I can just pass as modules. So auth view models module and auth module will contain dependencies that only auth activity subcomponent will have access to. And then you can also take it a step further by scoping it. So I've added an auth scope to the auth activity subcomponent, meaning that auth activity subcomponent owns the auth scope and the dependencies inside of here also are part of the auth scope. So if I go into auth here and I go into auth module, you'll notice that both of these are scoped to the auth scope, meaning if for some reason the auth activity subcomponent is destroyed, uh, then all the dependencies inside of that subcomponent will also be destroyed, which is what you saw actually in the previous video, the one we did before, the one I did before this, where I talked about the different memory addresses of the user object. So rem remember the app level user object uh, maintains its instance when the activity was destroyed. Notice the memory address is the same, but the other one was, uh, it created a new instance. So that one is different than that one because that's the dependency that's part of the auth scope. That was uh, this user object right here. So now we, uh, we've talked about injecting activities, their dependencies, their scopes. Now let's review the fragments. So how do you inject a fragment? Uh, so if you look in activity builders module, you'll notice that I have inside the main activity subcomponent modules, I have a module named main fragment builders module. So let's go into main here and open up main fragment builders module. This is uh, the same kind of process you do when you're declaring an activity for injection. Fragments are exactly the same. You use the contributes Android injector, specify the fragment, and that's it. This name does not matter. This can be anything, uh, just like it can be anything for the activities. So nothing special here. You just, the fragments that you want to be injected into a particular activity or part of a certain subcomponent, you would just add as a subcomponent or a module of that subcomponent. So that's what I've done right here. Now let's talk about view models. View models are a pain uh, to uh, for Dagger to use, for Dagger to inject, uh, which I'm very surprised by because Dagger is a Google product and view models are a Google product. They're part of the architecture components library, but they don't work together. It's uh, there's They don't work together by default anyway. You can't inject view models by default. 
uh, because you can't add, they, they can't uh, have constructors that accept parameters. So if you go to one of our view models, for example, go to view model, we're, pat we're doing constructor, constructor injection with this view model, uh, which by default makes it unusable. So what you need to do is you need to use something known as multi-binding to work around this issue. And I actually don't want to review it in this because it's really complicated. I actually just recommend going back into the course and re-watching the video on multi-binding. Uh, it's a very complicated thing. It's not easy to teach. It's not easy to learn. There's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes. Uh, but definitely re-watch that video if you want a refresher on that. The only thing that I will review with you really quickly is what it looks like when you, when you actually inject a view model into an activity or a fragment. So you need to inject a provider factory, so a view model provider factory, which is, uh, again, you should review the multi-binding video if you want to review on that. And then when you instantiate the view model, you pass the activity or the fragment, and then you pass the provider factory and then call get and specify the view model. Uh, so the, the only difference here compared to when you don't use Dagger is that you need to use this provider factory, which again, I suggest rewatching the video on multi-bindings to review that process. Next, let's go and talk about some of the dependencies that we used. So let's go into, I guess, the app module first of all. So the app module is uh, the one of the modules of the app component. So if you look in the app component, it's specified right here as a module. Now inside of here, everything is annotated with that singleton, which is the first thing you should notice, meaning that it's part of the application level dependencies. So all of these objects will exist as long as the application is alive. First of all, you have your retrofit instance, which is one that all of you should probably be using because it's a very standard object that you'll be using probably in all your applications because everything needs to access the internet. Um, a, and then I have a couple other ones here that I added just for conveniences, just to show you some more examples. So you have request options, which is a glide object, request manager, which is a glide object, a drawable object for the login screen. So that's just this drawable object right there. We can inject that. And uh, then some random, this is a random user that I use to demonstrate the scoping. So uh, the only thing that I want to point out here is remember to use the at provides annotation to create dependencies and make them static whenever possible. I don't know the actual, um, the actual reason why you should use static, but everywhere you read on the documentation, in any blog post that I've ever read, everybody always says use static because it's more efficient. So somehow it's more efficient is, is, uh, is all I know. So use provides, use static, and create those, uh, those dependencies. Oh, I actually also want to mention the there's another way you can provide dependencies. I can't remember if we did. Yeah, we did do it. Okay. So inside the view model factory module, notice that I'm using at binds to provide this uh, view model provider factory. So this is another way you can you you can provide dependencies uh, as opposed to using the at provides annotation. So they both pretty much do the same thing, but they're better for different scenarios. So you want to use at provides if you have a method body for your dependency. So notice in here when I'm building the retrofit object, there's a bunch of stuff that I need to include in the method body. So we have to use at provides. Uh, at binds can be used if you can declare an abstract dependency and it doesn't have a method body. So basically if you just want to provide the object and you don't need a method body, you should use at binds. I'm also I've also read from the documentation and many blog posts that at binds is somehow more efficient than uh, at provides with a static um, with, with a static declaration. So if you can use at binds, but most of the time you probably won't be able to because you need to have a method body. So those are the two ways that you can uh, provide dependencies to your components. Now, the last thing that I want to review is the session manager. I think this was like a really cool thing to do and I'm glad that I added it to the application. So the session manager is a class that we created and we declared it inside of the app component. So it's, uh, it's essentially an application level dependency is what it is. Uh, and that's this class right here. So all it is is a class that holds a reference to a user object. And once a user is authenticated, that, uh, that user object is set and this, because this session manager exists in the application component, in the app component, and it's annotated with at singleton, this user object essentially 
will uh, hold an authentication state. So, and it can be observed from the activities. So uh, you can inject the session manager into a view model or an activity, and then you can observe the authentication state. If they log out or if they're unauthenticated, you can react to those changes. So I'll just show you kind of how we used it. So if you go into the base activity, you can see that I injected the session manager, and then I subscribed observers and I observed the user object from the session manager. Then if for some reason the user becomes unauthenticated, uh, they're navigated to the login screen. So it's a pretty cool use, uh, pretty cool use case, especially in conjunction with a base activity, because then any activity in your application can extend the base activity and, ex and observe the authentication state. So it's a pretty easy way to manage authentication in your application. I think it's a really, really cool way to do it. So uh, that's it for the course, at least for now. I hope you liked it. And uh, once again, uh, since if, if you got any value from this course, I want to ask you uh, for a testimonial, please take you know five minutes out of your day, not even five minutes, it would probably be like literally two minutes out of your day. Register account on coningwithmitch.com. It takes 30 seconds. Go to testimonials, click uh, write a testimonial over here and say, Mitch helped me get a job or whatever I helped you do, it would mean it would mean a lot to me. It would help. Every testimonial helps me a lot because uh, these online courses are how I make my living now. That's literally how I you know pay rent, buy food, uh, how I live, how I continue doing these. So uh, a testimonial would be awesome. I hope you enjoyed the course. I enjoyed making it. And uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought of it. What you, what you thought was good. What you thought was great. What you thought was bad. And in the next course, I'm planning on working on unit testing. So we're going to be kind of applying all of the dagger things that we've learned to a new concept altogether, which is unit testing.